Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. In this video we are handling a whole lot of Mars arrivals and maneuvers around Mars in order to get everything over to Phobos so I don't have to get into a whole bunch of different orbits in order to resupply our various Kerbals who decide to go to Mars which is a popular destination after all. This here is a little tug that is just UDMH and NTO, so it is hypergolic, very simple storable fuels. And you can see all the orbits that we have around Mars, they're all in different places with different apoapses, so it's very inconvenient to get to them. And we need to use tugs like that one in order to move them around and get them all to Phobos, ideally. Here's copper spikes arriving at Mars. This is the Mars Mellow spacecraft, as we called it because of its general look and it has enough fuel to capture without any trouble uh, partly because copper spikes is just one person inside a very large habitat here so we were able to put some extra fuel i think and uh yep there we go it does have spare supplies as we can see uh, copper spikes did not use all of that during his trip there and we're getting into an orbit that's conducive to that tug uh, bringing us in, but we didn't really need that. It looks like we have enough Delta V to get over to Phobos, and so I do a whole bunch of corrections. As many corrections and little maneuvers that I show in this video, there are a lot more that I cut out. <laughs> so this was uh, the two live streams worth of a lot of maneuvers around Mars, basically. So there's the arrival at Phobos. Uh, we needed to rendezvous with the station there, and so you can see sort of a encounter node. But before I could do that encounter, we had to deal with other maneuvers. Uh, so back to this little tug that needed to do an inclination correction to match up with Phobos itself. And we will eventually try and get over to one of those other missions. You can see I've targeted a mission there with a very high-flung apoapsis, and so you need to create this really wide orbit to get to it, because if you want to encounter something in that sort of eccentric orbit, it's better to try and encounter it uh, closer to its high point, where the speeds are all slower. So we'll be going very slow with this craft and the other craft, and it'll make it easier to rendezvous. So I aim for that sort of thing, but we'll have to wait because that this orbit is now very big and it'll take some time to get into the right position. Next up we have Mars Vessel 2, which has been hanging out around Mars with your pops and Madden Kerman for a very long time. And finally we're going to bring it in to Phobos Station, but we need to uh, dump that module there so that a tug can attach to that point. And here's the Mars Mellow with copper spikes arriving at the Phobos Station. Everything. Yeah, we're all handling everything at once here, so it's all going to be mixed up to some extent. We need to get rid of this uh, particular vehicle with the Lynx capsule on top and uh, the very complicated Raidernick special engines at the bottom. And I didn't think that there was any fuel in that pod, so I moved the station away from it using the station's RCS. But actually, it turns out that there was uh, some RCS fuel in the Lynx capsule it itself, just a little bit of methane and oxygen. Which is good because the station is turning so that I can face its port to the arriving marshmallow and I needed to get this out of the way fast. So as you can see a bit of an emergency avoidance maneuver here. And the thing is the marshmallow just doesn't have that much fuel that's why I needed to move the station. You can see it has 10 meters per second of delta V so that's a little bit harsh. So actually I docked the station to it rather than dock it to the station uh, just to be safe. It was using its RCS propellant in order to just hold steady for us. So yeah, that was that ended up being tighter than I wanted it to be, but we got here. So that's how the Phobos station looks right now, but we'll be a adding a whole bunch of other stuff to it. We have a convenient little hub there, but can we really fit everything? Because with that Mars Mellow there, the other stuff might have a little bit of trouble actually attaching. Uh, so that's a, an open question. This had just enough RCS fuel to deorbit. I mean, we're only going at 4.4 meters per second here. It's not that hard. Uh, and here we have one of those obnoxious fusion things that on a whim I decided to try out. Uh, mainly because of the cute little poop plume. I mean, I don't know if you can call it a plume. The little pink pellet that poops out regularly to give us our thrust here. Uh, but yes, very efficient, and it's carrying a whole lot of fuel, so we're getting that into orbit. 
And this is a nuclear engine that is going to be used as a tug. You can see the claw there uh, for tugging purposes. So this is yet another tug, but we have a lot of vehicles around Mars that need some tugging. So, so we needed both tugs as it, as it turns out. Uh, so this is capturing with its nuclear engine. There we go. I think it was one of the NASA NTP engines. So very straightforward numbers, especially when compared to this. Uh, this is actually one of two of these fusion things because the first one I launched, I think I ended up with too little Delta V or I thought too little Delta V. This is the one with all the Delta V. So you can see 10,000 there. Uh, so it is replete with Delta V, partly because I think I uh, underdid the payload for it. The payload is just various fuels. Uh, here we have the original tug that I started off with in this video and it is continuing to make maneuvers as I check our life support situation which is very important and the reason why all of this is coming in. So this is uh, this is vessel number two. So this is the one I launched first actually and it doesn't have a whole lot of Delta V as you can see. That's why I launched the other one. All right, so this here is actually Mars Return Vessel 3, bringing three Kerbals back from Mars, and it's using ion engines to do that. Unfortunately, ion engines take a lot of time, and it's not very accurate, and we need to avoid accidentally plunging into the atmosphere, so I'm a little bit radial here. But the burn takes so long that I misjudged it. It was only supposed to be 700 meters per second, but so I was sort of surprised it took this long, and we ended up going on escape. We're very close to Earth orbit, but not close enough to make it before we escape. So it'll need some sort of rescue or some sort of, maybe a, an additional maneuver. It's got plenty of Delta V on it, it just needed more time. So we'll see what we need to do with that. At least they still have supplies there. So they should be good, uh, but we'll have to catch up with them later on to make sure they do get back home. And here we are again with Mars Vessel 2 with your Pops and Madden and we are clearing off a spent section that we don't need so that it'll be easier to move the rest to where it needs to go. We need that docking port anyway for the little tug to attach to it. So yeah, the tug is waiting there and it's a dramatic scene where that trusty module is separated and left to be a derelict around Mars because I'm I'm trying not to clear up anything that is interplanetary or around another planet for now. It does create a lot of overhead as far as lag and such is concerned, but it would be nice to not get rid of that stuff in the tracking station at least. If we can deorbit it, it's fine. But that uh, the tracking station I do use for stuff around Earth orbit that we do clear. All right, so. That is all attached and we are ready to go. And this is our NTP vessel. This is a nuclear vessel that brought Aronim and Kurovka. And I decided to get rid of the spent tanks or just leave them alone and move just the habitat portion here and also the engine section with the nuclear engines and just attach those two parts together since the other tanks don't have any fuel. Unfortunately, the heavy portion of all this is the habitat and the next heaviest portion is the drive section with the huge nuclear engines on it, fairly heavy. So we only have 1,600 with just the drive section alone left and as we dock we'll have much less as you can see. So is that enough to get us all the way over to Phobos? Well, that's gotta be a trick. Anyway, these are all clear, you can see a lack of propellant in there, so we'll just have to deal with that at some point. But, yep, here we are making the first maneuver, free of those spent tanks, and we'll see how it goes. This is Mars Vessel 2 again, and doing yet another burn. There will be many, because we want to make careful rendezvous with Phobos to save on fuel. And this is the nuclear tug, so this one has the claw in front, that's how you can distinguish it. Alright, so this is Mars Vessel 1, which was the very first Mars... Well, it had other stuff docked to it. Mars Vessel 1 has had attachments, and we're going to get rid of one of those, uh, that module over there. Uh, because it'll be really hard to move Mars Vessel 1 with that on. So, actually maybe not that hard as it turns out, but anyway, that was not necessary, so we're sending it off. 
And Mars Vessel 1 also will be moved towards Phobos, hopefully. We are using the Briz engines on the right hand side. The left hand side has an ED4V engine, which is methane and oxygen burning, but I don't think it has much fuel. So, we, uh, well, again, we're jumping around. That's Mars Vessel 2. And I decided I needed to dump whatever I could dump because this was not going to be enough. Or at least it wasn't safe. So after dumping what I could, I continue with the burns with a nice view of Mars in the background there. Eventually, we're going to need some regular Mars lander system. That was what the Maru Q was for, but I'm still working on that. So I haven't introduced it into the save yet. Anyway, uh, so Mars Vessel 1 now is free of that other module and the Briz engines made uh, the burn that we were looking for. And then I had Durlaf here, our engineer, get rid of some extra parts to save on Delta V. So here we're just disassembling. And in retrospect, maybe we should have had more of our Kerbals get out and disassemble parts that are left with the derelicts now. Might have been a little bit better. But uh, yeah, that stage, that methane oxygen stage was just useless at this point. So it is gone and we'll save some Delta V like that. But enough, mm, we may need some help with this one. We'll see. Anyway, it has another maneuver to do later on, but we need to turn to other things first. And once again, Mars Vessel 2 doing yet another thing. Basically what's happening is we have the inclination changes, then we have to lift our periapsis up to Phobos orbit, then once we meet up with Phobos, we need to bring our apoapsis down, and sometimes we bring our apoapsis down a little bit first to get the encant with Phobos. So basically you're talking maybe four different maneuvers for each of the vessels, assuming that they're not rendezvousing with some tug or something. So anyway, here is the final burn at Phobos finally for Mars Vessel Two and Mars Vessel One is doing yet another burn with those Briz engines. And then the nuclear tug is appropriately heading for the nuclear stage with the habitat on the front uh, with Aranim and Karovka. So here it is approaching that and it'll just claw uh, that section. At least uh, dumping the fuel tanks meant that this has less to push around. It's a pretty big tug. But that's mainly because of needing to carry all that liquid hydrogen, which is obviously not dense. I don't think it's as big as one of those tanks that we jettisoned from this, but it might be close. It's about that size. Anyway, uh, back to the fusion, semi cheaty fusion, very cheaty fusion engine thing with very little delta V, and it is making one of its maneuvers. You can see the radiators trying hard there. Uh, those are graphene radiators, so I mean, if you're gonna cheat, you might as well. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're just sending fuel like that. It's just not sending kerbals or anything, or supplies. Okay, so here we've got yet another rival around Phobos. Finally, Aranim and Karovka are getting into orbit here. And there we go. Yep, actually we ended up using the three engines on that one side just to expedite. I decided to use this fusion stage that is carrying all this fuel except for itself. Uh, it doesn't have enough of the lithium for itself. I decided to use it to tug Mars Vessel 1. I don't remember why I thought that was a good idea, but it is much larger than Mars Vessel 1 in mass. So even though it doesn't have much Delta V, carrying Mars Vessel 1 along is not going to hurt its Delta V too much. But you can see, center and 17 meters per second left when you've got this kind of engine is uh, quite remarkable as far as using its capabilities up. You can see all the fuel we have there, it's just not fuel that we can use. We had to make sure that we were docking at a location that would be the center of mass, otherwise using the engine would be catastrophic. So uh, I turned on the little red dot display that MechJim has and you can see the red dot there and in fact it looks like the combined center of mass is uh, something that the engine can push through. So it looked good for that purpose. And here we go again with that very unique exhaust that this has. And we manage it. We get our encounter with Phobos. It didn't take too much. It wasn't that much Delta V. They were both pretty close. 
And here we are making orbit around Phobos with this, with those radiators glowing. And in the next video, we're going to have to try and get all these things together. There's still a few bits that are hanging out elsewhere that we still need to get to Phobos, but we got a lot of stuff over here in orbit around Phobos. They just need to be docked together. And that's a little bit of a trick because, again, with that uh, Marsmallow Hab sitting there, it's tough to fit all the pieces right. And we'll see how it goes in the next video. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.